Mum! Yes? Have you seen the bathroom plug? The one that's loose? Yeah, it's in the kitchen sink. Oh, Rod, don't take it out of there, cos I've got some things in to soak. Do you need any labourer again today? Uh, no, Tar, you did a load yesterday. But thanks for offering, like. You're welcome. I enjoyed it, actually. Lots of fresh air and that. Well, I do need to keep cracking on. We need to have it done in time for the... Um, Nan. The barbecue that Rod and Di may be having, possibly. Well, you need me, then. I need you. Start later, eh? All right. Hi. Rod, cover yourself. <laughs> Naked men in the window this time of the morning. <laughs> uh, Rod, is it Diana's half day? Yeah, as a rule, but today the stock taken. Changing around the layout of the shop, so she's had to go in. Could I help? Oh, it's just a little problem with childminding. I'm due at work. Margaret's away for a few days. Well, I managed to bring up my own and two oh, grandchildren. That was kind of you. I'm afraid it's a bit of a handful now. <laughs> so was I, Rod, at that age. <laughs> well, it's kind of you to offer, but um, I've got a few alternatives, so I think I'll go and try them first. Dad, can you get me some batteries for our cases radio? Sure, yeah. I'll get them on the way back from work. And you try and get yourself out. You're not a prisoner, you know. Yeah, well, that depends on Madam in there. Ah, she's been great this morning. Yeah, I even had time for the bath, but I still feel wet. I tell you what, now you go and treat yourself. Go and get your hair done or something. Make you feel better. Oh, if she decides to screen the shop down. So what? Uh, grow another skin. You think about Sammy for a change. Try and make some time for yourself. I'll see you, Mum. Yeah, thanks. This is broken! Could you do me a favour, please? Well, I'll certainly hope if I can. <laughs> this is the second request we've had today. <laughs> we cork hills are in demand. Yeah, well, you look after the baby for me while I nick the hairdressers. I mean, I won't be long, I really won't. It's only round the corner. Ah, take care of your little mic for you. Of course, I will. Thanks. You're welcome. I thought you said this was quick drying varnish. Well, Kid wanted to do another coat. He's a confectionist. Right, Matty, can you take this in by going around the side? Hey, if I would have fancied myself on a tightrope, I'd have joined the circus. Mike, get your shoes off and get in there. Take this. I'll go and get the rest of the stuff. I can't make this out. What do you think? Well, it's different, I'll grant you that. <laughs> Might be all right for Blackpool. I think I like it. I'd stick to the surfboard if I were you. <laughs> aye, aye, Michael. Bit of all right, Dad, anyway, kid. Yeah, cool, isn't it, Jim? There's only one thing wrong with it. I haven't got one outside my place. Well, I'll tell you what, me mate Keith does the design. If you're interested, like. Oh. Well, I better get cracking. Oh, does your dad do scourers? He does, Johnny, but mine is cheaper. Come here, kid. Hey, Ange, I'll tell you what we could do with a couple of these, couldn't we, eh? You could have Kayla's on your floor, and I could have 50 <laughs> P's on mine. <laughs> nice one, Mikey. Right, take this in. Right, I'm going in barefoot this time. My socks are varnished, and I'm doing the washing at the moment. Oh, is your mum on strike? Now, to be honest, she's gone missing. I don't know where she is. Oh, I see. My well, dad reckons she's not too bothered, but she's dead cut up about it. Don't you worry. Let's sort it out. I mean, you worry my now. Go on. Go for your paddle. There you go, John. 50p, mate. Now, listen, while you're here, can you attempt to with anything else? Oh, no, thanks. I've just gone my way into town. I don't think you'll have it here. Hey, listen, try me. It's a Latin's cave, this place, you know. Go on, speak out. Well, it was Barbara's birthday yesterday. I did buy her a present, but it didn't go down very well. I was hoping to top it up. John, I have got just the thing, mate. Here you go. Set of Italian frying pans. There we are, look. Ta -da. Well, it's not the right image, I'm afraid. And besides, I do most of the cooking. Mm. Well, come on, then. Help us out, you know. I mean, what sort of, uh, you know, image? Well, I think you'd like a sort of... Well, a more feminine present. Is that all? No problem. Thongs. Thongs <laughs> as in bondage? No, John. Thongs as in briefs. Yeah. Very brief briefs. When I said feminine, I didn't mean just overtly sexy. Oh, I'm with you. You mean sexy, but refined. Am I right? Am I right? Yeah? 
Well, how's about this, then? Ta-da! It's not bad. Imagine the lovely creature in this, eh? What size is this? Uh, that one is size 10, that, John. Well, actually, it's the only size I've got, you know. Well, that's the drawback with enterprises like this, you know what I mean? You've got to take what's going, haven't you? Can you get other sizes? John, for you, no problem. Listen, I'll be seeing my contact later on today. Hey, I'll tell you something. You'll be well away with this, won't you, kid? Right, Mrs Brown. 10.30 Friday, then. Bye. You all right there, Mrs Daniels? Oh, yeah, fine, thanks. And Gemma's party tomorrow. Just wanted to check that you girls were coming. Yeah, they're looking forward to it. Um... Look, it's a bit awkward, this, Sanjay. Um, it's not going to be anything too grand. I mean, I can certainly manage a cake. Can't I contribute anything? Yeah, well, maybe a small contribution to the food that mm -hmm. you If you brought some rolls or something, if you oh, don't mind, that is. I'd be glad to, me. Yeah. It's just that, um, things are a bit tight, you know? Oh, yeah, I know. OK, I'll leave you two of them. Right. See, See you then. Four o'clock tomorrow. Um, tell your girls to bring some soft toys along. Some teddies, if they've got them. It's just that I'm going to have kind of a teddy bear's picnic party, you know? Teddy bears. They're outdated, isn't it? Think so. Yeah. You know what my girls would like? A disco party. Think Gemma would like that. I'm ask her. Call back later. All right, I so will. <laughs> See you later. See ya. Sorry to keep you waiting. Oh, it's fine. Right. What would you like done then? Oh, anything really. It's just nice to get out of the house and be fussed over <laughs> for once. Well, sit back. Let us fuss over you, and you'll end up looking real. <laughs> How am I ever going to do any work with you under here? That's it. Play with your toy. You don't want to play with this. It's all dirty. Eh? Why are you... Oh. So, the rumours are true. We are running a crash. Ah, uh, sorry. I had to bring Thomas in. Yes, I heard. I gather that you're nannyless. That must be difficult. Yes. I mean, we're in the process of sorting it out, but um, we haven't quite managed it yet. Well, I imagine you work with him around at home. There's no reason why you can't do the same here. Well, in theory, no, but I <laughs> put all his toys in with me and he chooses to play with a waste paper basket. Um, you don't mind, do you? I was really stuck. Oh, no, it's fine by me. It's just word does get round. I don't want people saying, why not me, or be inundated with babies. Well, can't stand gossiping all day. I'll pop back and talk about it later. Right. Come on, you. No noise, no tears, and we might just make it through the day. You're gonna go flying there. Oh, I very little thought of that. She loves it. Here, come and look at her little face. <laughs> no, no, it's ran away. Oh, Mr. Harrison, you should see a little face when I go jigging around. You like that, don't you? Yes, you do. <laughs> I tell you what, oh, they're leaving the garden and you two can call me if she cries. Yeah, but we've got a job to do, Nan. I mean, it's in the way, that is. Why did you offer to have the thing? Don't you go talking like that. That thing is a poor defenceless baby. And you might be trying for one of your own once you get next week over. He has to wait until the end of next week, does he? None. Oh, I just meant that Rod's busy at the moment, you know, like with the patio and... A barbecue party. <laughs> just something me and Dad have next week, like. All right. Hey, that'll be some party, this. All this fuss to get a patio ready. I don't know. Ah, well, there I am, with all my expertise, ready to be of use to my favourite nephew, you know. Don't disturb the baby, Jimmy Corfield. I mind you for Sammy from across the road. All right, Mary Poppins, I wouldn't do. All right, I'll go and get some more flagstones. Hey. You're retired, aren't you? Retired means retired. We don't want you straining yourself, do we? Yeah, have a sit down, John. Oh, I don't mind if I do. Hey, listen, <laughs> I haven't forgotten about your nighty. I'll sort it for you in a bit. Look, I'm really not that fussed. A promise is a promise, isn't it? You'll have it for tonight. Look, I'm in no hurry. John, you might have something planned. Know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> Jimmy, what are you doing? I'm taking over from your friend. Yeah, but these things need to go down the right order. You're gonna mess my system up. 
Hey, John, go and lock that pram, will you, kid? Go on. Reminds you of your old bath chair, won't it? You're not funny, you know. Nan! Nan! Oh, she started. Get down here, it's doing me head in. Oh, she'll have to hang on a minute. I've got to go to the toilet. Well, why can't you just put her around the front? Because there's all sorts of funny types around these days and I'm responsible for her. Hey, wait till he's got one of his own. He'll love it to death then, won't he? Hey, won't you? Do you think Louise will be all right if we brought her to the party? Of course she will. Yeah, look at this. Mike Dixon known as this. She'll be all right for the disco, shouldn't it? Great. So you've decided on the disco idea, then? Yeah. So I've come to tell you that it's on, and you can tell your girls tonight. And Gemma? She thinks it's a great idea. Pump up the volume or what? <laughs> <laughs> but what, the neighbours complain about the noise? Nah. Well, I've just invited this neighbour, haven't I? <laughs> I'll see you later. See you see later. Right. How much does say? Oh, it's all right. Keep the change. Well, thanks. Well, I hope you think it was money well spent. I think it looks lovely anyway. Yeah, could do with some new clothes to go with it, though. Well, why not? Go and treat yourself. Do you know, I think I will. I think I'll nip into town. I mean, I could race round, couldn't I? I mean, it wouldn't take me that long. You must have a better child mind than I have. She hates it when I change my plans. But if I'm just ten minutes late, well, she gives me the evil eye. That's right, Jenny calls it anyway. Yeah, well, when I said, uh, mind, uh, the, the baby's with me, Dad. He's looking after her. Well, that's different, isn't it? Now, don't you go spending the air. John, listen, I'm off to town now, OK? Don't you be overdoing it, do you hear? <laughs> I'm just taking a breather. Does that satisfy you? Oh, yeah. Listen, I'll have your stuff for later on, OK? You'll have to buy tonight. See you later, OK? I'll see you, Jim. What do you think, Mr. Harrison? Sammy Rogers said she'd be an hour. It's over two now. Who do you think she is? I'm sorry, I've really no idea. John, I'm having a problem with one of these flagstones. I just can't get it even. <laughs> I'm right with you. <laughs> I think you should go and look for Sammy Rogers. I know she's gone to hairdressers. Yeah, well, you go and have a look now, why not? Well, I can't do any harm. That's right, now go and have a look. I will. Let's <coughs> have that. <coughs> Almost strike. Right. Change of sign. We open in half an hour. Hey, I wonder how much this has cost us, being closed half a day. Hey, I was just thinking, you know, you could have made money this morning. How? I've got to make some deliveries. All we need to use is the phone. How can we make deliveries? We haven't got any transport. Keith's got a van. Employ Keith for the summer. Yeah, he needs a job the same as I do. Well, we'd need some good publicity. Oh, that's simple enough. We just put an advert in a local freebie paper. We say free pizzas unless delivered within half an hour of, say, a three-mile radius. Great. to you to get a haircut. Yeah, she did, but she's going to town now to buy some clothes. Well, what about the baby? Sammy's baby, is it? Well, yes, of course it is. She said her dad was minding her. But why? Hey, if you feel the clan hates this approach, I am prepared to go back to the drawing board. No, I think I can persuade them and it's a good wow. idea. You see, if I think something's good and I think this is, I don't have a problem. But your heart has to be in it. Yes. I work better that way. Are you trying to tell me something? That because of your passionate concern, you could make a success of this charity account? Can we talk about it for a minute? For a minute, yes. Big charities mean big business. Yes. Even with charity rates, there are often sizable overheads for marketing. Well, of course. Well, that's why we can take on a large charity account. But then the smaller charities don't get a look in, especially this one. Do you know much about their plans? I know what good work they do and what further work they'd like to. And I know that none of it will actually happen unless their marketing is handled professionally by people like us. I know you think I only want to do this for personal reasons. Well, don't you? Yes, of course. I understand and value their work. I mean, does that disqualify me, or does it mean I'm the one who should be working on their behalf? OK. What, I can take it on? Yes, so long as it's second priority. You put your other accounts first. 
If you screw up on them, I'll be down on you like a ton of bricks. I won't screw up on them. Thanks. Right. But remember the conditions. Oh, and uh, one more thing. Maybe you should sort your childcare out because uh, and this really does have to be a one-off. I realise that. Good. Hiya. Hiya. Yeah. Matty, can you work out the advert? Yeah. If you phone it through today, it should make this weekend's paper. Nice one, Mikey. Could I have a word? Sure. I want to ask you a favour. You know tomorrow it's Gemma's birthday party. Yeah, I know, but I'm not invited. Why? Mick doesn't want me there. I've oh. fallen out. Oh, well, I had an idea, but I don't have to work now. Fire away. Well, I thought it'd be nice if you could make some pizzas for the party. I mean, the kids really love it. Yeah, that is a good idea. And I'd like to pay for them. Oh, no, 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 this is family. <sighs> yeah, but if you've had a row... Oh, no, 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 no. I'm not exactly flavour of the month at the moment. And, uh, this could be a way to get round in. <laughs> just, um, just let me know the numbers, OK? Yeah, great. Thanks. Town, she can't have done. The hairdresser just told me. Sammy told her the baby was with you. I've been to work. What's she playing at? I've only got one nappy left, and I'm certain this baby knows its mum's not here. OK, Julie, I'm sorry about this. Now, just calm down and tell me what's happened. You all right, John? Yeah, I'm just taking a breather. I, uh... I had to use my inhaler before. Well, why don't you go home, lie down? All right, then. Well, we won't be doing the cementing now. Not till all the flags have bedded down, like, but, uh, I'll just get everything on the back. I'll be, I'll be with you in a minute. Right. John, John, where's your inhaler? I'll phone for an ambulance. I'll be back. Nan? And then I went to town. I got some lovely clothes. I've got you two new shirts and our Katie and tea. Oh, they're in there somewhere. I'll get them when I come back. I've left the baby across the road. Julia will be going wild. The baby's here already. Why? Was something wrong? We'd have been bothered if there was. Oh, come on, tell me. I bumped into Julia on the close. She was worried sick. You said you were going to get your hair done. You'd be an hour. You went to town, you took three. I know, but I just went on the spare of the moment. Oh. And on the spare of the moment, couldn't you have phoned? It's bad enough you palm the baby off with someone. I didn't palm her off. Julia didn't mind. She's a stranger, Sammy. No, she's not. You know it was wrong. Because you told the hairdresser the baby was with me. I know that. Julia told me. Well, I didn't know I was going to be so long. But why? Try to explain to me. I can't. I just feel... <sighs> Sorry, it won't happen again. Sam, you're a good mum. I don't want to keep criticising you all the time. 
I want you to believe in yourself. But I don't know what's gone wrong here. Nor do I. I mean, I thought her being born would be the best thing that could happen, but... Nice and easy. Just try and relax. Mm -hmm. Just relax, John, while you're lifting on the top. Mm -hmm. Nice and calm. Nice and easy breath. Mm -hmm. Better add, man. I will. See you off. Everything will be all right. John, is it? Yeah, he's back. He was all right before, wasn't he? Well, he isn't now. How's the birthday girl? Ah, oh, Gemma. Ah, oh, she's really excited. Hey, I tell you what, if you think she's a handful now, you wait till she's six. <laughs> Listen, uh, you all right to come to the party? Yes, yeah, Sal. Great. Well, look, when you hear the noise, you know it started. Great. See, right, see you later. See you later. I'm not sure I want, Gav. Why did he go to town, son? I've told you. Well, tell me again, why? Enjoy yourself. And isn't that the type of thing you do with parties, eh? Hey? Come on, it'll be different. It's a change. Max? Yeah? Are you sure you're all right? Why shouldn't I be? I don't know. You've had to take the day off of work. You're looking after Thomas. I'd have thought your face would be tripping you up. No, I'm on top of it, that's why. It's all sorted, and that's all you need to know. Now, go on, you get off to work and leave it all to me. And after all, Thomas is well-behaved. He's a good boy. Hey, Maxie. Did you hear about John Harrison? No. Oh, he had a badass one attack. Pulled through like that he could have died. Pretty scary, isn't it? 
makes you think, doesn't it? I mean, I keep meaning to start training again, but things have been so hectic recently. Yeah. Not here for Margaret, then? No, not a word. What about you and Mrs. Dixon? No, uh, no, she's uh, still away, you know, visiting a sick uncle, though. Oh, I thought you said it was a sick aunt. Oh, sorry, yeah. That's what I meant, uh, aunt. Yes, well, you'll have to excuse me, because I've uh, got somebody coming. Oh, so I see. Bit of dark horse you, aren't you, Maxie, eh? And Pat just disappeared to work. Oh, don't be silly. Maxie, son, don't you go worrying now. Your secret's safe with me. I don't have any secrets. You sure about that? Pretty soon you're going to be after work, aren't you, behind them ordens? And if that's not a secret, what is? Because I'm sure it's not going to be hypermarket. No, it's going to be a petrol station, Ron, OK? Nothing more than a simple petrol station. You want to think next time before you let me wind you up. Uh, it's uh, Miss uh, Volska. Mr. Van Hank. <laughs> Pleased to meet you. Dear. I'm glad you found me. This one. Peter! Come to see how your dad is. Sorry? Your dad in Aussie. It was a bad term, wasn't it? Something wrong? Oh, uh, you don't know? Well, um, it's not good news, I'm afraid. Yeah, see, back to normal. I can go home now. Hello there. Welcome to Wormwood Scrubs. Name's John Harrison, chairman of the escape committee. Hello. Did somebody say you could deface this pavement? The caretaker had no objection, so we just went ahead and did it. How are you? Have you heard from Mars? No. You two have got something in common. Absent women folk. You haven't fell out with Mars, you have it? Yeah. Why well, have you fell out with Dee Dee? No, no, no. She's uh, just away visiting um, sick relatives like. It's like that, is it? Yeah. Hello. Hey. You ready for the party? Ready with the pizzas. Ready to the Come on, Sinbad, mate. Cheer up. She'll be back soon, won't she? Yeah, we just hadn't known each other that long, you know. We didn't think I'd miss her that much. Oh, well. Life goes on, doesn't it? It doesn't just stop. Yeah. Hey, look, I'll have to get on. I've got to visit Johnny Harrison in the hospital later. Oh, by the way, Ron, Jimmy said, can you pop in later on? He said he's got something he wants you to take in for him. Oh, I'll go now. Coming home today, but they'll keep him in for a couple of days, do some tests and make sure he's stable. Why didn't you let me know? I tried to, Peter. I phoned your flat last night. One of your friends said you were out. Could you pass his book and glasses? How did it happen? He was laying paving stones, would you believe? Doing macho things with a pickaxe. Dad! Trying to prove something, I suppose. But he isn't useless. But it's obvious that's just how he does feel. Useless. Finished. But he just has to adjust. Yeah, but it's hard for him. He can't just suddenly vegetate. He needs to feel useful. Peter, you weren't there last night. He was having steroids through an intravenous drip, a nebulizer, oxygen. I sat and held his hand. He was terrified. No, you can live your life without being a navvy. You look so mournful, Peter. What are you doing dressed like that? It's not your usual attire. I feel a total fraud. I'm going for an interview. I feel like someone else. An interview? Now the chemical works on the Wirral. What for? For a job. As a management trainee. Your father isn't going to believe this for one minute. Think it'll cheer him up? <laughs> you going for a job? It certainly will. Oh, seriously, I'm fine. I don't know why they're treating me like a patient. Chocolates are off me and uh, Jimmy sent you that. Thanks. Jimmy? I don't know what it is. <laughs> what do you think? Uh, I think it's your colour, like. <laughs> <laughs> It's a birthday present from Barbara. <laughs> yeah, well, uh, I think I'll put a wave out with you, mate. <laughs> anyway, what's the news from the front? Well, um... 
think the old mate Maxi Farnham has got himself a piece on the side. Oh, really? Yeah, cracking looking one as well. Got a bit of a funny accent. And, uh, oh, yeah, you know that building opposite me? It's not going to be a hypermarket after all. It's going to be a petrol station. Because that's good news, isn't it? At least it's not a supermarket. I don't know. Open seven days a week, 24 hours a day. Selling the sort of stuff that you sell and more. They're the corner shops of the 90s, you know. Right, eh? I never thought about it like that before. How's the shop going, anyway? Tell you the truth, mate, I haven't been able to get my head round it all week. I'm on my own, you see. The beautiful Dee Dee has done a runner. Don't know where she is. Have you had her out or something? Ah, she thinks I've let her down, you know, this Derek business. I suppose I have, really. She's got a punch. Has she not been in touch? Not a peep. Mind you, I think she's ringing the kids behind me back, you know, swearing them to secrecy. It's strange, though, mate, me. I haven't had the bed to myself for... must be 20 years. Don't like it much either, I can tell you. It's weird. I mean, a lot of kids are around, you know, making a racket, but... Sound like a lonely man. Yeah. I suppose I am, really. Anyway, how's Babs? Bet this lot shook her up, eh? I should never have retired, you know. Stupid. I'm inventing things to do. Things that don't need doing. It's been an absolute disaster. I'm so lost, I just bumble about. I don't know what I'm doing. Does Barbara know you feel like this? No, not really. Still, there's no point in worrying her, is there? Come on, let's go and get a cup of tea. Hang on, hang on. Are you allowed to leave the board? Oh, it's fine, aren't we? Come on. I want to be out of this hellhole by tonight. Hi, bro. I said you weren't invited. A pizza's for the kids. We're delivering and you're the first to benefit. You're not going to get around with like that. Oh, come on, mate. You don't want to spoil the kids' day all because of some silly feud. No, I won't spoil the day. See, Angie sorted the party for you. Oh, pizza's, pizza's. She sorted this. Come on, mate. Let me in if I get cold. Pizza! There you go, in the kitchen. <laughs> Max? Thomas? Is that you? Hello. Is it Mrs. Farnham? Yes. I I'm uh, sorry you weren't at the interview. I wanted you to be there, but Mr. Farnham said you had to work. W what interview? I don't know what you're talking about. I'm Anna, your new nanny. Yeah, he's got an ulterior motive, hasn't he? Oh, I see. Hey, uh, Mick, is uh, Marcia showing? Oh, she hasn't, mate. I don't think she's coming, you know, Sim. Uh, it's just on a thought, you know, the party and everything. I know, yeah, but people are still coming, so she might turn yeah. up, mate. Yeah. All right, Sim. Yeah. Dancing girls. Yeah, yeah. Do you want to dance? Yeah. You're dancing here. Yeah? All right, Sanj. Hiya. Today we're right. all right? Yeah. So what do you think, then? Going OK? Yeah, it's going great, isn't it? Yeah, dancing. And Gemma's happy, too. Oh, yeah. Hey, did I tell you? I've managed to get in the same school as Leo. I got a letter the other day. Really? Oh, Maybe I could switch our Jenny. Then we could take turns and take them in the morning. And my mind could pick them up after school. Well, I don't know about that, Ange. I think it's been decided already, you know, look. Ah, uh, no, I'm sorry. The influence. The friends in high places, haven't you, mate? Hey, Mick! Get on in the bedroom and everything here, mate. Oh, hey. Do you want me to go and chase them Come on. Oh, thanks, Ange. So, um, how is your friend in the education department? Did you manage to uh, thank her? No, I didn't. And I told you, I might not even be down to it. But I did give her a ring, left my name, and she wasn't in. Oh. Hey, wait, Doc, wait. it's not like that. No? No, it isn't. Anyway, I'm... Did you like to do Well, not particularly. I mean, look, keep the dancer going with him. I'm just going to see what's happening. Mick, Leo's been stung. It's on his leg. Oh. Put some cold water on it. Molly Atkins, come on, we'll all have a little dance. I'm going to be the rap monster. Oh. Get ready! Get ready! 
ready, kids? Are you ready? Yeah. And his lips really swollen, but I do take him to the chemist. Come on, I'm here. I'll look after him. I don't mind. Right, thanks, sir. Thank you for Simba, eh? Max, me, Thomas, and a new nanny. Well, uh, how's uh, how's it going? How's things? What did you think you were doing, Max? Getting us out of a hole. <laughs> oh, look at that. that. That's good. She seems to have quite a lot of patience with it. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter how good she is. The point is that you went ahead with that. It... I just, I don't believe it. No, all right, all right, come on, tell me. What were we supposed to do? Couldn't I have met her first? Couldn't I have spoken to her? Where's she from? I haven't even liked to ask. She's from Poland, and uh, her name is Anna Wolska. Now, she's been highly recommended by the agency, and well, she's more highly qualified than Margaret. I don't care about things on paper, Max. I care if I like someone, if, if Thomas likes them. Excuse me. Oh, hello. Oh. Um, Thomas says he's hungry. Is it okay to get him something? Yes, I don't see why not. Yes, of course. There's some fruit. Just ask if you're unsure about anything. Um, I didn't want it to spoil his tea. No, well, we're not very strict about things like that, as long as it's within reason. Oh, yes. Everyone is different. I have to do things your way, and I will. Um, but for the moment, I don't really know what you want, so I will make mistakes. But I will learn. Did you take to Margaret at first? Why don't you just give it time? There's been so much change this year, Max. Not sure I can cope with any more. And Margaret's more than a nanny. She knows me. It's like having a friend around. I miss her already. Yeah, well, she left us in the lurch, didn't she? And I've got it all fixed up. You didn't want to take him into work, did well, neither you? Neither did you. Anyway, I've really got to watch my step now. I've been given the charity account. Oh, and... your boss, Karen, she, she changed her mind. Uh, yes, yeah, I talked around. I really want to make a go of it. Well, look, let's make a go of Anna. Now, she knows it's only temporary, and she doesn't live in, and she comes here every day. Hmm? Just until Margaret gets back. Perhaps if you talk about it, tell us how you feel. No one really wants to listen. Be fair, Sam. What am I doing now, eh? I can't stop thinking about how horrible it was when she was born. Because it wasn't there, you mean? No. Just that. Well, they don't tell you the truth before. They don't tell you what it's like, and they ought to. And it's this awful shock. Yeah, but that's all in the past, isn't it? We've got the future to look forward to. I know you've had a really bad time, but it hasn't been easy for me as well, you know. Not as much. She won't always be a difficult child. It's just something that we both have to live with. I mean, we're responsible for her now. And I mean both of us. But the way I see it, this baby's brought us back together. And I'm really glad of that. I don't think she has. She has. Come on, let's go and see how she's getting on. Owen, let's have a dance. Well, dance, behave yourself. Not dancing here, but all these kids make the show themselves. No, it's Angie's got Louise. Look, the crowd are there. I'm going to get her. Come on, who's at the door? Come and lead the blind man. Who is it? Auntie Marcia, come on, let's go and have a look, eh? Oh, oh, come on, let's go. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Can I help? It's Mr. Johnson in. Girls, that go. depends which Mr. Johnson you're after. There's me, that is Ellis Johnson, or um, my rather ugly brother Nick. I'm Marianne Dwyer. Your brother telephoned the other day, only I kept missing him. You seem to be making a habit of it. You've missed him now. Oh, well, if he's out, it, it doesn't matter. Oh, you know, he's only just popped to the chemist. He won't be long. Come through. If you don't mind. Oh. Welcome to the Madhouse. Well, who'd have thought it? My son, in his own suit and tie. Hey, thanks, Dad. Oh, seriously, son, we're very pleased. Welcome to society. <laughs> Tell us more about the job. Well, it's, uh, for the big chemical company. What made you apply for it? 
Are the holes in his jeans? It's not all affectation, is it, son? Yeah, he's right, I suppose. I was just fed up with being poor. But you get a really good two years training, and six months of that spent abroad. Oh, I like the sound of that. Yeah. Anyway, we'll see. I feel confident I might just get this job. Well, are you going to the interview now, are you? No, just to the loop. <laughs> it's good to see him happy, isn't it? Mm. Gives off energy when he's like that. You can almost warm yourself at him. <laughs> yeah. You tired now? Hmm. Have they talked about your treatment when you come home? Yes, and I don't want to discuss it. Well, they talked to me about it, and I promised them you'd be sensible. Rush. John, I don't want to nag. And don't. But you know, this needn't have happened if you hadn't... Yes, of course I know. Please don't make matters worse. It's bad enough having all this fuss. John? <laughs> that. That's an extra present to make up for the schoolmistressy one. Mm, it's chic. <laughs> Thank you. You're welcome. Oh, Ron's in trouble with his marriage. Dee Dee's just stopped and left. I thought he came to cheer you up, not burden you with his problems. Oh, it makes you think, though, doesn't it? I mean, we've had our problems, but basically we're pretty solid, aren't we? I can't leave you for two minutes. Are you going to this interview or not? Yeah, I'm going now. As long as I can trust you to look after yourself and take it easy. And is that your parting remark? It is. Well, I'm up here with remarks like that. You, your mother, this place, you're all as bad as each other. Where are you going? Down to the desk to see if I can't discharge myself. Sorted now. Oh. Look, I was wondering, I hope you don't mind this, but is there anything you could do? No, not really, I'm afraid. Oh, could you give us a hand, please? Yeah. Oh, yeah. I, I'm in the way, look, I really must go. Oh, no, no, you're not in the way. That's all right. I'll go and give him a hand, eh? No, I ought to look in at the office. Oh, all work and no play. I didn't say that, did I? So, um, I have to see you out. You do, I'm afraid. Right. Wish you didn't have to work in the evenings. So, it's my job. You know, I can't talk out of it. Can't you finish early? Oh, you know I can't do that. I mean, I've got to be good at this job, haven't I? I've got you and Louise to think about, and if you want to be kept in style... I don't. I'd rather have you around. Oh, come on, Sam. She's not going to be a baby forever, you know. I mean, pretty soon she'll be growing up, won't she? She'd be wanting all sorts, clothes, new toys, everything. And if I wanted to have the best of everything, which you do, I'm going to have to work really hard to get it all, aren't I? And we need someone else to live, don't we? Look, don't worry. Everything will be all right. And listen, don't wait up. I'll probably be late. You go to bed. All right? Sure. I'll see you. I'm still not sure what you want me to tell Mick. Well, say I called and I'm sorry I missed him. And that you'll call again? I shouldn't think so, no. It wasn't anything important. Well, in that case, um, I'll have to arrange to see you. Why? Because I want to discuss the education system. <laughs> <laughs> no, seriously, I thought you might like to go out one evening with me. I'm very confident. I'm not sure when I'm free. Well, um, I'll give you some time to sort it out, and then I'll phone you. Yes? All right. I'll see you. There you are.
Hi. How's it going? All right. Did you get the shoes already? Yeah, yeah. No. What's wrong? You didn't put new shoes on the table. It's bad luck. Look, we're getting married on Friday. And this time, nothing could go wrong. Oh, yeah, you said that last time, and look what happened. I ended up waiting at the altar, and you got beaten up and sent to hospital. Yeah, well, it won't happen this time. I've even ordered ten tonne of sunshine for the party afterwards. You promise? I promise you. Everything's been taken care of. The registry officer's booked. Tomo, Tracy, your dad, me nan, have all been sworn to secrecy. Even the patio will be finished. Don't worry about anything. And the main thing is, I love you. Miss Diana Spence and Mr. Rod Corhill cordially, cordially invite Mr. and Mrs. M. Farnham to a barbecue on Friday, 17th of July. RSVP. Pizza parlor's engaged. I'll try again later. Must be making a fortune there. Mm. Hi, Matty. It's Ellis here. Listen, mate, um... The advert seems to have had the opposite to the desired effect. It's a waste of time coming in. It's dead here, mate. Yeah. Yeah. No, no, I'll let Keith know. Yeah, see you tomorrow, then. All right, bye. I don't know. I thought our advert for deliveries would have had the place buzzing. It doesn't seem to have worked. Are you sure you don't want anything to eat, Simbad? This is about Marcia, isn't it? Are you hanging around? No, it's nothing else on, you know. Can I help you? Oh, I'm uh, not really sure what I want. Uh, can I just take some time to read the menu? Take as long as you want. Thank you. You're, um, you're not from round here, are you? Uh, Swoops. Swoopsk? Uh, Swoopsk. Where's that then? About 300 miles from Berlin. Oh, so you're German? Um, no, I'm from Poland. Have you really heard of Swoopsk? I've been there. Stop it. I have. I've seen my Jimmy Corker's looking for you, something to do with his bin. Oh, he's got a cheek ass. He's not even. Hiya, ah, Mick. Yeah, right. Hey, listen, there. Uh... Your kid reckons he knows the town where this young girl comes from. Where is it again? Swoopsk in Poland. What do you reckon? Yeah, well, nothing he does or doesn't do knows or doesn't ever surprises me. There's a problem. Swoopsk. I'll get it. to bother you. You must be busy. Oh, it's all right. You're just doing a bit of cleaning, you know. Sit down. Oh, very domesticated. Well, you know. Oh, I do like your sweet. Yeah, they nearly cost as much as our first house, but it's functional. <laughs> oh, I know the cost of things. Actually, it's about money that I'm here, in a roundabout sort of way. I just want to check something out with you. Yeah, sure. Well, you know, at your place is an insurance policy for anyone who dies while they're at work. £25,000. Yeah, the next of kin and the title to him. Well, the company, or the insurance company, are refusing to pay out because our Nick was breaking company rules when he crashed. Breaking company rules? How? He can't have been speeding because he was bogged down in a concert flow. And I know for a fact he was well within his hours. He was carrying passengers, and he shouldn't have been. Oh, God. I forgot about that, Lynn. Oh, Lynn, this is terrible, and it's all my fault. Don't think for a moment that I called round here to make you feel guilty, because I didn't. I just wanted to ask your advice about it, that's all. £25,000. Blown because he was good enough to give somebody a lift, because I asked him to. Please don't take it like that. I feel terrible now. I just wondered if there was any cause for an appeal. I don't even know if he was in a union. No. None of us are in a union. It's a sad thing to say, but if we were, we wouldn't be employed by the Alfred. Just hoped he was. Hello, love. How's she treating you? Terrible. Ah, oh, she's improving. Not that I've noticed. Oh, and the washing. I can't believe something so small can have so much washing. If I'm off feeding, I'm off to my elbows in the sink. Oh, I know, love. I've been there. Here. 
Let me take her. Thanks. There you go. Oh. I'll tell you what I did when my youngest wouldn't sleep, if you don't think I'm interfering. Oh, no, anything. I bought a lamb's fleece for her to sleep on. And did it work? Yeah. Well, now, whether it was that or just a coincidence, I'll never know. It's worth a try, Sam, isn't it? Yeah, but, like, in the meantime, I'll just see if the fresh air is going to knock her out. OK, Sam. See ya. <laughs> oh, come on, then. Tom. Right, Sam. Um... I'll make us a nice cup of tea and we try and sort out a solution to this compensation problem. You make a cup of tea and show me the baby's clothes that need washing. You can't do that. Yes, I can. It's obvious you've got enough on. I've had plenty of practice at it. Now, don't argue. That poor girl's worn out. She needs all the help she can get. Show me the washing, Frank. Won't stop us talking. OK. Hi. Hi. Hello. Thomas. You out with Anna? No. He's fast asleep. Where? In bed. Brianna's been playing with him all day and he's absolutely shattered. She could hardly finish his tea. She's, she's brilliant with him. She really is. Hmm. You're going to be long at the table. Writing a speech for the table. Yeah, but are you going to be long? Well, about ten minutes or so. Why? Well, I just wanted to do a bit of paperwork. So, where is she then? Mary Poppins. Oh, she's just popped out. <laughs> Guess what she's doing when she comes back? What? The ironing. No, I, I just mentioned in passing that I had a very important table meeting tonight. I needed a dress shirt ironing, and she turned around to me and she said, I'll do the lot. <laughs> I mean, remember the fuss we had with Margaret over a little bit of ironing? It, to be fair, it is above and beyond the call of duty. And what about Margaret? Oh, she walked out on us, Patricia. Ran off with a priest. At least that won't happen with Anna. Her being a, a Catholic and, um... Oh, she's Polish, too. Pope's a pole. What's that got to do with anything? Well, she's much less likely to run off with a priest than a non-believer would. She'd be worried about the, uh, the, the wrath of God and all that. And do you think that's a good reason to take her on? That's about as logical as not employing her because she's got a foreign accent. Ah, now then, you were worried about Thomas picking up Margaret's northern twang when we first met her. It was a slight consideration, but it didn't stop us in the end. Yeah, well, I think if she ever does return, we should sack her. She really let us down. And I also think we should offer Anna the job, permanently. She's a class above Margaret, and, um, Thomas is really getting used to her. I'll get it. Hi, darling. Hello. Oh, hey, Come in. Come in. Hiya. Hello. We're invited to a party. Oh, good. When and where? Read the invitation. Very nice. You will come, won't you? Definitely. Is it for anything special? No, just a barbecue. Oh, sounds good enough to me. <laughs> I've got one for Margaret as well, but will she still be away? Well, we're not sure. I mean, we're not even sure if she's going to come back. We haven't reached any decisions yet, have we, Max? That's something we need to discuss later, in private. We'll see.
Every time I start over and somebody knocks on the front door. Should I get it? I'm a bit stuck here, if you don't mind, thanks. Yes, yes. It's just hoovering. Oh, no. Just been hoovering. So she said. I'll, uh, just go and finish that washing, shall I? Who's she, Frank? Yeah, she's just a friend of mine. So have you been? I'm all right. I thought you might have been in touch. It's been a while. Yeah, too long. Uh, I've been away on a few trips, you know, and what with the baby and that. Uh, there's a pot of tea made if you fancy one. No, thanks. I don't want to interrupt anything. But you're not. Hey, great to see you. All you had to do was ring me, and you could have seen me any time. Obviously, you've got other things on your mind. I don't be like that. Didn't take her long to get her feet under the table, did it? Washing in the sink as if it was their kitchen. Lynn's just helping out. How oh, is that a name, Lynn? She gets on well with us, Sam. You know we're having kids and that. Oh, don't bother explaining, Frank. I'm going. Oh, hang on a minute, Denise. Lynn's been through a hard time recently, and she just called on to ask my advice. Oh, and she just happened to bring her washing with her, did she? Oh, here's another one. But don't bother to call me, Frank, because I won't be in. Oh, but Denise! I've just brought you this. Oh, thanks. Come in. Hello. Hello. Eh, uh, Lynn, this is Diane. Uh, Diane's a neighbour and a friend of ours. What's this? Oh, Ray. Hey. I'd love to come, yeah? Oh, I'm sure that's Sam in home, will too. Eh, uh, Diane's invited us to a party over in her house Friday night. Oh, very nice. Hope you have a nice time. You're welcome as well, if you like. Oh, well, look, that's very nice of you, but... No, uh... really, it's no trouble. I mean, there'll be lots of people there, and we're expecting mainly, if not all, couples. Oh, go on, say you'll come, and then I can get my list made. Uh, it's very kind of you, Dan, but the thing is... Oh, I thought you said you were going to come. I am. I mean, we are. I mean, me. Well, what's the problem, then? I'll see you both on Friday. If it doesn't rain on St. Swith and say all will be fine. Oh, and tell Sam you can't get a babysitter just to bring the baby with her. Oh, that's very kind of you. Great. See you Friday, then. OK, yeah. Bye. Bye. See you, love. Bye-bye. <laughs> Why didn't you just tell her I wasn't you? That we weren't a couple. I just didn't want to embarrass you, you know. I mean, she seemed so happy, didn't she? You don't have to go, do you? Well, I'd better now to save your embarrassment, don't you think? Yeah. All right, Grace. Well, why is it so important to have this patio finished off when it's been a mess for ages? Well, Diana thought it would be nice to invite a few people to a barbecue, right? And that I'd give us a deadline to have it finished. Oh, right. Hi, love. Hi, yeah. right. Grace, just passed an invitation through to Mixed Letter Wax and the Harrisons. I've seen everyone else, they're all coming. Great. Hey, listen. Rod's told me what it's all about. You know, this Friday. I think it's great. I, I haven't said anything. Why is it so important, though? Jimmy, we just want everything to be right, and it will be. Yeah, well, seems a load of bother to me for a barbecue, do you know what I mean? Yeah, well, we just like to do things properly. There's nothing wrong with that, is there, eh? All right. All right, Mick. Yeah. I did knock at the front door, then hear voices around the back, you know. I tell you what. I know what to come if I want some building work done, don't I? Oh, yeah, as long as you're not in a hurry. Hey, gee. Anyway, listen, I just thought I'd come and say thanks, and uh, yes, I'll be there. Oh, great. So, listen, what's the occasion then? Mm, nothing, just a barbecue. Listen, uh, anyone heard how John Harrison is? Well, he's taking it easy. I was talking to Mrs. Harrison yesterday. But he's all right, though, isn't he? Well, as far as I know, for anyone who's crippled with asthma. Crippled? Oh, well, yeah, that's what I've heard. I hope he's all right. I've invited him to a party. Oh, I've got it. Hey, I'm not going to be a grand uncle as well as a grandfather, am I? Hey, is that it? Is that it? Is she preckers? Jimmy. Well, and it's still something that's applicable today. This paradox of public with an official population of some 54 million is heavily concentrated on the banks of the historic river. Most visitors will initially spend a couple of days in Cairo before being shuttled off by a boat to the splendors of Tarmac and Abu Simbel. However, the city is worth a second look. Once you've done the standard sites, the Egyptian Museum, the Pyramids and Memphis... Can I have one for free if you want? To wander around the no, you don't have the it. Markets of old Cairo. And hey, are you sure that advert went in the paper? Yeah. Pizza Parade, under new management. Offer to deliver to your own within 30 minutes of ordering, or it's free. Offer only applies to a three-mile radius of Brookside Parade shopping precinct. From 259... Why didn't you do that before? If it is, we're packing up early and going home. 
Pizza break, can I help you? Yeah. One ham and pineapple, one seafood special, two garlic break. Can I just take your address? Yeah. Yeah, sure. It'll be about 20 minutes. OK. To be delivered. Guess where? 10 Brookside Close. Close? That's Rod Corkill, that is. He's got a cheek, hasn't he? It should take all of two minutes to deliver that. Hey, don't knock it. It's business. Hey, maybe people are picking the paper up and seeing the advert for the first time. Pizza breaking out. Yeah. Yep, yep, that's the deal. Within a three mile radius. Yep. Yeah, shout them out. One hot and spicy. Do you know you actually look as if you're enjoying yourself? <sighs> Relaxing, isn't it? Max, I am trying to work here. Do you mind uh, stepping into the living room, please, Patricia? Yes, Max, I do mind. I've just fed a jumble of numbers and statistics into here, and with a bit of peace and quiet, I might be able to make some sense of it. Um, I'll, uh, just take these upstairs. Sorry, I'm sorry to be a bit off with you. I've had a hard day, and I just want to get this done, then I can relax. You said you weren't going to bring office work home with you anymore. Why don't you put your feet up? Well, it's not work work, not as such. Didn't have time at work. It's a new charity account. All right, all right, as long as you don't overdo things and tie yourself out. Thanks, Max. So, what are we going to do then? Nanny wise. Nanny wise. Let's just wait until Margaret gets in touch. Take it from there, eh? Well, we have to put a time limit on it. We, we can't wait for her forever. All right, all right. We'll talk about it when I'm less busy. I should have made some sense of this lot in 20 minutes or so. It's 5 95 please. Thanks very much. Sinbad? What? Will you get the phone, please? Oh, yes, yes. Thanks very much. Look, we're going to have to get all the Matteo keys, you know. Right, if it carries on like this, we'll need them and some. Hello? We have nine free pizzas as yeah, it is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Which ones? Yeah. Yeah, the address and number. There you go. Super 8 specials. There's the address. Oh, another delivery. No, no, no. We need help desperately. Sit back. Can you find Matty and Keith? The numbers are on the wall. Got on us. It's over three quarters now. Send the phones. Not much. Keith there. Oh, no, we need another driver. Okay. Thanks, Even if we get Matty and Keith, we still need another driver. Right. Keith's mum said he's gone out, and Matty's not answered him. Oh no. Simbad, do you want to earn some extra cash? Uh, oh, look, please. Oh, look, don't look at me, mate. I've got two jobs already. Mike, hold the fort. I'll be back in a short while. Any chance of those free pizzas, then? That could all be Japanese, as far as I'm concerned. Oh, well, the technology is Japanese, but the information is very British. It was extremely disorganised, but it's looking a bit more presentable now. Oh, I think this is about as technical as I want to get. <laughs> Anna, you've done a marvellous job on this. Thanks very much. Thanks very much indeed. You're welcome. And that is the last one. You unplugged my machine. I mean, that is all my work. Gone, all of it. Well, sure, it was an accident. I mean, if you plug it back in again. I was just about to save it, Max. It's just gone, okay? It's gone. And Anna, I think you'd better go too. It was an accident, but. And she's staying. I really am very sorry, Mrs. Farnham. Uh, I think I'd better go. I'll um, see you tomorrow. What do you want me to do? Hmm? Do you want me to get on my knees? Do you want me to beg? We've actually got customers waiting. Please, Mick, we need you. You're naughty to see on your knees again, little brother. Come on. Help us. It isn't just for me. We want to make a go of this place, and we need a driver tonight. Terry's given us a few weeks' trial. 
If we don't make it, he's going to close us down and I'll be joining you on the dole. What have you done to me? You know I'm sorry about that. Oh, please, Mick. Why should I, Ellis? Because I'm your brother. That wasn't my choosing. Because you've been around as long as I've lived. Because I've always depended on you and you've never let me down. I want to make a genuine go of this business and I can't do it with the people I've got. And because I'm a soft touch? Yes. Yes, yes. And because you're a soft touch. I'm going to regret this, I I owe you one, mate. Only one. This will cost you for life, brother. She's got to go. It was an accident. It could have happened to anybody. Is it because she's foreign? Don't be ridiculous. Then why are you so much against her? Margaret! Ma Margaret. Wonderful, loyal Margaret, who's just run off with a priest. I'm surprised half of Fleet Street aren't camping out on the front lawn. I mean... How can you be so loyal to Margaret when she's been so disloyal to us? And how can you just take Anna at face value when we hardly know her? We hardly knew Margaret when we first took her on. And I want Anna to stay. Do you now? Yes. Yes, I do. Haven't you better be running along to table? You're going to be late. Don't you talk to me as if I was a child? Well, honestly, Max, you behave like a child sometimes. Earlier, for instance, you were like a puppy panting at Anna's feet. You're jealous, aren't you? <laughs> this is what this is all about. What this is all about is that I don't think my husband is making a very rational decision about a very important matter. That is, who looks after our child? Ironing a few shirts and looking good is not a firm basis to take her on full time. Hi, Sam. She asleep? Yeah. She sleeps for about an hour in the afternoon, which means she's awake all night. I know it's tough, but it does get better. Just think about her first birthday. Imagine what it's going to be like in 12 months' time. If I make 12 months? You will. You're tough. And I'm just about as useful as an ashtray on a motorbike. You can't help being away. I know it's short notice, but that goes with the job. Might be back tomorrow. At least he's earning money. You're not going on a long trip, are you? Just overnight. She'll be back midday tomorrow. Sam, why don't you ring your mum? Have a chat. See if she can give you any tips. What about that tip that Lynn gave you? What one was that? Well, she said she bought a lamb's fleece for one of her babies and it did the trick. Not even Louise sleeping on a dead animal. They don't have to kill them to get the fleece, you divvy. They just shear them. I'll try and bring you one back. I wish you weren't going. It's part of the job, Sam. Oh, might be back tonight. He said tomorrow. Well, tomorrow then. You'll be all right, won't you? I suppose so. 
Why don't you ring your mum? All right. Where are you going? Nailsworth, just south of Cheltenham. I've never heard of it. Well, you have now. And then I'm going to nip into the depot, have a word with Mr Nice about Lynn's problem. What problem is that? They rolled him back on paying compensation because her brother Nick was carrying passengers when he died. Oh, yeah, Derek and Margaret. Yeah. So, I asked them to give him a lift, so I feel obliged to help the family. Ron, shut up. What's happened to this place? Are you all incapable of being left alone? It looks disgusting. Yeah, well, we've had more important things to think about than a dirty kitchen, haven't we? Like where you've been. We found everybody we knew, not even Maria knew where you were. Come on, we have to talk. What are you doing feeding my kids with junk food? Could you not even be bothered to cook? It's a bit late for the care and mother routine, isn't it, Dee? Anyway, I don't want to talk about the kids. I want to know where you've been, and I want to know now. What the bloody hell do you think you were doing? Just oh, walking yes. Out? That's typical, isn't it? No apology. I just walk into this mess, and all you're bothered about is whether your precious routine's being disturbed or not. Dee Dee, will you sit down? Please. Right. Now, would you tell me what you'd like me to apologise for? Because I've done nothing wrong. You still don't realise, do you? I walk out, the place goes to rack and ruin, and you don't understand that you've caused it. I suppose I'd better go and see what the rest of the house is like. I'm not a mind reader, love. You don't have to be to know that you hurt me. You know what my religion means to me, but you still threw it in my face. Encouraging Margaret to take our Derek away. For God's sake, will you listen? Derek asked me for the money. Margaret doesn't even enter into it. He just wanted to take it away for a few days so they could spend some time together. Where are you going now? To pick up a few things. You're not going again. I'll hang around till the kids get home and then I'm off. Dee Dee, no. No. Dee Dee, look at me. Look at me. I need you here. To humiliate me even further. Oh, come on, love, say you'll stay. Please. Look, what's done is done. I can't help what happened. And I'm really sorry if I upset you. Upset me? Do you think I like what's happening to our Derek without you making it easier for her to get a clause into him? Do you think I like being away from my kids and my house? What about your husband, Dick? Dee Dee, stop this, will you, for God's sake? Dee Dee! I need you here with us, love. Don't go again. Dee Dee, at least look at me. Look, love, I can't force you to stay. But I want you to know that I do love you. You know I do, don't you? And that I'm... Well, I am really, really sorry for everything that's happened. I'll stay. But you've got a heck of a lot of thinking to do about our Derek and what all this means to me. Because if anything like this ever happens again, I'll go and I'll never come back. Now, you know what the hospital said. Why don't you make life easy and do as you're told? Barbara, I'm fully grown. I have all my faculties. And I'm perfectly capable of looking after myself. Will you please stop treating me like a sick child? But you are sick, John, and you do need looking after. I've had an asthma attack. I've been having them for years and I've always coped. But this was a very serious attack. Now, take it as a warning. Why are you being so awkward? Because I hate being fussed over. 
Well, I can't bear the idea of having to take steroids for the rest of my life. It isn't for the rest of your life. Hello, Peter. You're looking very pleased with yourself. Well, I'm not sure if it's anything to be pleased about. Still malingering then, eh, Pops? Don't start winding him up. He's not malingering. He's had a very serious attack. Oh, thank you very much. You certainly know how to cheer somebody up. I'm trying to look after you to the best of my ability. I need help, not sarcastic remarks. Sorry. Dad appreciates a joke. And I know how ill he is. I'm not ill. Will you two stop talking about me as if I'm not here? What were you looking so pleased about when you came in? Got the job. Peter, that's wonderful. <laughs> that's great news, old uh, Get your feet back up. Hello. Uh, it should be good for drying. Yeah. It's never ending, isn't it? Oh, especially when there is a child in the house. Is uh, Marga still away then? Oh, yes. Uh, you know her then? Oh, yeah. I know her. Um, what was she like? Young and immature. Are you taking her place, then? I'm a temp. Well, Max wants me to stay on, but I'm not sure about Mrs. Van Ham. Has Margaret gone for good? Oh, that is the problem. They don't know. They haven't heard from her. They don't know where she went to or when she's coming back. It seems really weird to me. They even think she might have run off to get married. Married? Oh, and between us, I think there is something a bit odd about the man she ran off with. Oh, they're not a pair for gossiping, the Van Hams. But it would not surprise me if there wasn't something very, very strange about him. So, I've sold out to the establishment. Sold out? You've got yourself a job. That's not selling out, that's being responsible for once. Will you stop winding him up? Especially at the moment. Sorry. Especially at the moment? When you're not well. Will you stop treating me like I'm on my last legs? You're not even on your legs. Just tell us about this job, will you? Just tell us straight. I told you. I'm being taken on as a management trainee, which means I'll be doing all sorts of jobs for two years, and then if I fit in, if I creep to the right people, I might end up managing one of the factories. Well, that's very good. Now, it's a proper job, isn't it? It's not a government scheme to keep you off the unemployment figures. It's a proper job. When do you start? Next Monday. I do a three-week induction course working in every department. And I was only half-joking when I said I'd be making the tea. Probably will at some point. Well, there's nothing wrong with that. I enjoyed it. And now you can enjoy your retirement. No, I can't, because it's come too soon. Still, there's next door's garden party on Friday to look forward to. Well, there's a point. Grass needs cutting. Don't you even think about it. Well, somebody's got to do it. It's going to be very embarrassing if they start talking about it, knowing we're the next-door neighbours. Well, you're not doing it. And neither are you. I don't want you coming down with your hay fever next to your dad. Windows. Oh, right. Nice day for today. Yes. Um, yeah. Okay, lovely right. jubbly. Right. See ya. Oh, just before you go, um, do you do anything else apart from window cleaning? How do you mean? Well, um, my husband's not very well at the moment. I'm looking for a handyman. To do what? The garden. The garden. Yes, um, they're having a garden party next door on Friday. And yeah. Our garden looks a bit of a mess, so um, what do you think? What would you think for 8.50? 10? <sighs> yeah, great, yeah. In fact, I'll come round after I finish collecting, OK? Ah, oh, good. Right. Um, I just want you to promise me one thing, though. What's that? I don't want my husband lifting a finger. He just isn't fit enough. Don't worry, I won't let him touch nothing. In fact, if he touches a blade of grass, I won't accept a penny. <laughs> All right. <Terrific. laughs> uh, what time did the invitations arrive? Only mine must have got lost in the post, you know. Oh, no. Uh, they were delivered by hand. All right. <laughs> All right, Sammy. All right, Sammy. Aye, oh, aye. She's got her mother's good looks, hasn't she? I'll give her a flying start. Where are you going, love? I'm taking her to the hospital. I'm just cutting through the passageway. I'll walk as far as the pizza parlor with it.
Hey, that you nanny at the farms is a bit of all right, isn't she, eh? She's the one I saw with Maxie the other day. Too busy to notice. Right, business, that's what I've come about. Oh, we're not open yet, Rob. Ellis, do I look like a pizza eater? Come about the rent. What about the rent? Well, a firm of estate agent, Fletcher's, have been appointed by Mr. Barry Grant to collect the rent in his absence. We don't pay rent to Barry. We sublet from Terry. So with the rent? Yeah, well, Barry Grant has only put a firm in charge of collecting the rent, hasn't he? Just thought you had Ellis man and all something about it. Right, well, I'll let you get on with it. But I just thought I'd mention it, you know, cos we're gonna have to watch that they don't go shoving the rent up. I mean, they won't be doing it for nothing, will they? I can't see Barry Grant absorbing the cost of an estate agent. Right, I don't see you chaps before. I see you the call girls do. All right, zero. Now, are you sure you don't want anything? How many times do I have to say it to convince you? No, I don't want anything. And not even a puzzle book? Not even a puzzle book. Right, well, uh, Peter will be back soon, and I won't be long. So, uh, I'll leave you to enjoy the peace and quiet. I don't want to enjoy the peace and quiet. Oh, you will have some company later on, but you've got to ignore him. What on earth are you talking about? Well, I've asked Sinbad to come and tidy the garden up a bit. Barbara, I'm not having a virtual stranger working in my garden. Your window cleaner's never a stranger. It needed doing, and you're in no fit state at the moment. Don't argue. Just relax and enjoy the peace and quiet. Best. It's for all of us. Denise, you just caught me. Come in. Where are you going? Work. Um, down to Nailsworth. I've never heard of it. Where's that? Oh, it's a lovely little place. So how are you? Oh, I'm all right. She not here then? The washerwoman. Lynn? No, uh, she was just out last Sammy with some of the baby's things. I'm sorry about the other day. I was just a bit surprised to see her here. Well, more than a bit surprised, a bit upset, I suppose. Frank, why haven't you been in touch? I've just been really busy, you know. I've been all over the place. I'm up with the baby and everything. Are you sure you've not just gone off me? Gone off you? Hey, don't be daft. You're top of me list. Because if you have, I want to know. Denise, I've just been really busy. Now, I'm back tomorrow. I'll give you a ring and we go out soon. Great. How about Friday? Friday? I'm not sure about Friday. Oh, no. I've got to pick Arcadia up from my mum's Friday. What about Saturday? Oh, I was going to the pictures with my friend Michelle. Oh, but I can put her off. Oh, no, don't let her down. We can always go out again. Do you want to go out with me or what? Of course I do. What have I just said? You just said not to put Michelle off. You don't sound so keen to me. Oh, Denise, what can I say? Sunday, why don't we go out for Sunday lunch? Oh, great. Where shall we go? Southport. Lovely. What time? Um, I'll pick her up at half twelve. How's that? Smashing. Right, I'd better get off. Oh, right. How's the baby and everything? Fine, um... She's still not sleeping through, but our Sammy's coping, you know. They're going out for the walk. Oh, good. Right, I'll see you Sunday, then. OK. You going home? No, I'm going into town. I'll drop you off, if you like. Oh, great. Thanks very much. OK. What's up with you? I'm just amazed how hard you make that look. And you could do better, could you? Before, for a living, little brother. We did well the other night, didn't we? I mean, the delivery service has really taken off and the turnover's not bad. What do you think? Don't ask me what I think. I'm going to drive around here. Yeah, if you do want to make a real go of this place, you need to make a few changes. Yeah? Well, I mean, Matty can drive, you can drive, Keith can drive. The only problem is none of you can cook properly. 
So, uh, why don't I stay behind here and let someone else do the deliveries? Just to see how it goes, like. Hey. Could do. I mean, just to see how it goes, like. Yeah. To give it a whirl, eh? Yeah. We could make a living out of this place. Well, a few changes, of course. Oui. It's nothing too drastic, though. Just broaden the horizons a bit. Mexican food, tapas, that sort of thing. Yeah, we could, couldn't we? See, people travel, experience different foods. And there's no law that says we only have to sell pizzas, is he? I'll have to stop now and again and clean the blades, you know. Right. And when you do, be careful. Better to unplug it, really. Oh, right. I was thinking of leaving the motor running, you know, just for the hell of it. Sorry. Are you going to this party on Friday? Uh, no, no, I've got something else on you. Should you be standing? What do you mean, should I be standing? Well, I thought you'd be taking it easy with your feet up. What exactly has my wife said to you? Well, only that you're recovering from a very severe asthma attack and you should be resting. Do I look ill? Well, no, but it's all to do with your lungs, isn't it? I mean, you might not look ill, but it doesn't mean you're not ill, does it? Look, I'm fine. My wife is just being over the top, that's all. I'm perfectly capable of knowing my own lawn. Now, please, let me take it. Hang on, just, oh, just leave it, will you? You go in and have a lie down and leave this to me. Go in and have a lie down? Who the devil do you think you're talking to? Hey, hang on, don't be going at me, you know. I'm only taking orders. All right, fair enough. If that's the way she wants it, that's the way she's going to get it. Hello. All right. Who's roped you into this? Oh, your mum. Your dad's got a knack on. That's because he's treating him like an invalid. He hates being inactive. He'll be right as long as he behaves himself and keeps taking the tablets. <laughs> hey, yeah. Uh, does he get these asthma attacks often, like? Yeah. Well, yeah, sometimes. But... Look, should I be feeling guilty about you doing this? Oh, no. Not unless you try to take my gear off me and do me out of a few bob, like. <laughs> <laughs> no, you're all right. Look, I'll see you later. OK. Cheers, mate. I see Mum's mobilised the cavalry. Yeah, it's embarrassing, isn't it? I'm perfectly capable of mowing my own lawn. Take advantage, Dad. If Mum wants to enlist, hired help, let her. Saves all the jobs landing on me and you. Since when did you do any work around here? Well, I was going to, wasn't I? But now I'm in full-time employment, there's no time. Mm -hmm. Never mind, eh? Look, uh, make the most of your new home help. Take it easy. Looks like I've got no choice. married. God knows where he is. And he could be married. Are you listening to me? I don't have any other choice, do I? I blame you for this. Me? Yeah, I didn't encourage Daddy to fall for Margaret. You gave them the money to go away. You let me down, Ron, just when I needed some support. Dee Dee, I did not give him money, right? I lent him it. And anyway, why don't you stop being so selfish and think about them for a the change? Me? Selfish? Yeah, you. They're a young couple in love. What have you forgot what that's like? He's just a man, Dee, that's all. A man who's fallen for a woman. I just wanted to see him happy. Yeah, well, you made me very unhappy helping him. Well, I'm very sorry about that. I'll tell you something else. We might be forced to open Sundays once that petrol station gets going. I can't open Sundays. I certainly can and will if I think we can get the custom. Don't forget, we pay rent seven days a week for this place, so we might as well open Sundays. Because you can bet your life that that place is going to be open 24 hours a day, flogging everything we do and more. Ron, my brother's run off, possibly to get married, and all you're bothered about is this shop and making money. Actually, it's a great shame that they had to get off, because I do enjoy a good wedding do. I hope he comes to his senses before it's too late. Oh, hello again. Oh, hi. Hello. Well, aren't you going to introduce us? Uh, well, this is the Farnham's new nanny, Ron, my husband. I know, I know. I don't look old enough. I just thought I'd say that before you did. <laughs> <laughs> nice to meet you. And you? <laughs> um, my name is Anna, uh -huh. and I'm only a tenth, well, for the moment. <laughs> so, uh, how'd you get on with Mad Max, you know? <laughs> You mean Mr. Farnham? <laughs> He's all right. Um, I'm not sure I'm quite on the right side of Mrs. Farnham, though. No, well, I wouldn't worry, dear, because with a smile like yours, I'm sure you'll soon win around. Right, now we are self-service, but I am here to help you, the customer, travel smoothly and happily through my emporium. <laughs> Hasn't he got a lovely way with words? <laughs> yes. He has his moments. 
Mm. You're not expecting a fit young man like your Derek to remain celibate when there's gorgeous things like her walking around. I expect people like our Derek to have their mind on higher things, and I expect my husband to behave like a husband, not some adolescent teenager. Twenty past. <laughs> what do you think? You look great, Nan. Oh, oh, thanks, love. You don't think I've overdone it, you know, with it not being a church wedding. You look just about perfect. And you haven't told anybody, have you? I haven't breathed a word. Right. Hey, it's not too late to change your mind, you know. Hey, don't you go talking like that. We want this to be as smooth as silk this time. Oh, I don't think we've met. You must be uh, Julia Brogan's daughter. <laughs> Oh, you'll make Chief Constable talk like that. <laughs> oh, you look lovely. So do you, Nan. Great. Time to go then, eh? Let's get ready to rumble. <laughs> All right, Sam. Hey, you've been working hard. Place looks great. Thanks. You all right? Fine. Where's Louise? Uh, she's upstairs. Sleep? Yeah, she's fine. Do you have a good train? Yeah, yeah, nice and straightforward, you know. I'm, uh, I'm glad she's given me a bit of peace at last. Yeah. Anywhere from home? Yeah, he phoned. Uh, he should be home soon. Thought we could go to the pictures. Pictures? What about Rod and Diane's party later? Oh, yeah, Saturday. Yeah, nice weather for it, isn't it? Is it? I haven't really noticed. You sure you're all right? Fine. Look, why don't you have a nice rest and I'll go make some nice pot of tea? Okay. From Margaret. Good news? Good news? It's egg of a cheek. She swans off, leaving us in the lurch, and she has the audacity to say she'll be back in about ten days and she'll take it off a holiday entitlement. Oh, she has apologised. Oh, well, that is good of her. Notice she hasn't even said where they are. 
Mm, the postmark's smudged. Mm, she's blotted a copybook as well. Though. As far as I'm concerned, she needn't bother coming back because her job's been taken. You haven't told Anna she's got a job here permanently, have you? No, not yet, but, I mean, we mustn't waste any time. I mean, she'll be snapped up soon by another family. All right, but we'll have a good long talk with Margaret before we make any firm decisions. She's our nanny, Patricia. We are not a social workers or a parents. Oh, I've still got you home. I'll have to go away more often, then, if this is the kind of welcome home I can expect. Aye, aye. Here we are. Oh, cheers. So, uh, where is she, then? Oh. She's upstairs, fast asleep. How was she last night? No trouble. I've got her something. I hope she likes it. I don't think she'd be complaining if she doesn't. I think I'll take her upstairs and hang her on a cot, and she'll see it when she wakes up. No! What's wrong? I don't want you to wake her. It might not be a bad idea if she does wake up now. Then there's a good chance she'll sleep tonight. Yeah, I mean, she's got to have a bottle soon anyway, hasn't she? What's wrong, Sam? What's going on? There's something wrong, isn't there? Oh, she's better off. We are. We all are. It's all right. Sam, now you take your time. What's wrong? She's not there. What? Sammy, where's Louise? She's gone. She's gone back. It's all right. Gone? Where's the baby, Sammy? Party? Are we going to this party? Sammy, love, please, w w will you tell me, where is Louise? Where's the baby? You don't know what it was like. Sammy, what have you done with her? Where is she? I just wanted to sleep. Sammy, please tell us where Louise is. Oh, leave me alone. She's gone back. Back to where? Back to God. I just wanted some peace. Sammy. Come back here. What are you doing? Sammy, come back. Where is she? What have you done with her? Mr. Rogers? <laughs> Sammy, Sammy, what's happened to her? Sammy, what's happened? What's wrong? What's happened? It's the baby. We don't know where the baby is. What's the matter with her? She won't tell us what's happened to the baby. Well, there's no use shouting at her. Look, our baby's missing. OK, look, let's all calm down. Be rational about this. Sammy, come here. Come inside. Come on. Uh, when you say missing, I mean, do you think somebody's taken her? We don't know. We've both been away overnight. And when we came back, the baby isn't in the house. And Sammy either can't tell us or won't tell us what's happened to her. I think she's had some sort of breakdown, you know. She's been exhausted for weeks now. Well, look, let's just think rationally about this. Do you think you know, she's left her with anybody? Her neighbours, friends? Look, if we keep calm, we'll find her. Uh, look, um, Frank, you look round the close. Owen, you go to the shops, and uh, between us, we'll sort it out. OK, Max, yeah, we meet back here. Thanks. Right. Everything will be all right. I'm just saying it was a stupid thing to do, that's all. All right, will you stop going on about it? Oh, it was tempting fate, you know, Rod. Well, don't tell me you believe in all that nonsense as well, do you? <laughs> no, no, not really. I just think we'd be a bit reckless if you did do it on purpose, that's all. Yeah. So, touch wood, everything will be all right. All I did was walk under the ladder to prove it doesn't mean anything. I'm going to keep your fingers crossed all the way through the start of me, just in case. Doomed. We're all doomed. Behave you. Hey, let's have a bit of decorum, will you? This is a very special day. Oh, the registrar's taking his time, isn't he? Maybe something's happened to him. Don't you say that. Everything's going to be all right. To be honest, I expected a crowd outside when we arrived. No one knows we're here, do you? I mean, Anne knows, doesn't she? Eh? I heard that, Rodney. Fancy suggesting that I might betray her confidence. Fancy, yeah. And don't call me Rodney. <laughs> Dad, do you start crying again? What you got over all this? Yeah, I'll, I'll be all right in a minute. I mean, this is a big day for me, you know. I mean, as well as you two. I, yeah. I know. Sammy? Yeah. Have a cup of tea. Mm -hmm. Do you want to talk now? It's torture. Torture? I've been able to sleep. I, I couldn't go on. Sammy, where is she, eh? Where's Louise? Don't worry, it'll all be all right. You're all on your side. I just... I just had to get rid of her. I just had to. Sammy, 
How do you mean, get rid of her? Couldn't go on. I just had to. Look, it sounds pretty serious to me. You better go find her dad and Owen. Hmm. I mean, you don't think... You don't think she could have harmed the child, do you? Yeah. I'm afraid I do. be my lawful wedded wife. It's the fire alarm! Oh, it's a false alarm. It's bound to be. Oh, I told you not to walk under that ladder. I knew this would happen. Could you just do it, please, mate? Quickly. important this is, don't you? Where's Louise? I didn't hurt her. I gave her back so I wouldn't hurt her. She'll be all right. We all will. Sammy, will you just tell me where she is, please? I'll, I'll, look, I'll go and get her. I want to go home. Can I go home now? Yeah. Of course you can, Sam. I want to take it home. Come on, Sam. Come on. I'm sorry about this. Oh, there's no need to apologise. I just hope you get it sorted out quickly. I mean, no one on the clothes saw with the baby? No. Oh. It's just a thought. Yeah, anything. Your wife. Could she be minding her? I doubt it. But I'll try and get in touch with her. What a mess, eh? Thanks for your help, anyway. If somebody doesn't start making sense soon, I'm going to have to ring the police. God knows what they'll make of it. Oh, just try and be gentle with her, eh? What about phoning your family doctor or health visitor or something? Yeah, thanks. You'll let us know? Yeah, sure. All work out right in the end, Frank. Getting something? Certainly not. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, we did it. Told you we would, didn't I? Oh, yeah, but you said nothing would go wrong. A man, a hiccup. I've never talked so fast in all my life. I've got up on these persons here, present. <laughs> <laughs> oh, what a day. Do you mind if you make a pot of tea, Diana? Of course I don't. When have you had to ask before? Well, you're the lady of the house now, the boss. <laughs> Oh, I really did think something big would go wrong, you know, especially with you walking under that ladder. Rod, quick! What's wrong? In the garden. What is it? Surprise! Hooray! <laughs> <laughs> All the best kids! Nice one, Rod. <laughs> oh, you look lovely, love. Nah, that's a great... You didn't you, now? Well, they're all invited to a party anyway. I just thought I'd get them here a bit earlier, that's all. You don't mind. No, but I don't think the teapot's going to be big enough. <laughs> hey! Who's bothered about tea? Here, yeah. oh. build your boots, come on. OK, can I have a bit of order now, everyone? Bit of us, please. Oh, no, Jimmy, don't spoil it with a speech. Look, I just want to have a brief word, that's all. There's no stuff. Now, listen, I just want to wish your favourite nephew here and my lovely new niece-in-law, all the very best for the future. And I hope this little gathering has been uh, a nice surprise for them, you know, not too much of a shock. And I uh, want to thank Julia. Where are you, love? I'm here. Yeah, want to thank Julia for letting the cat out of the bag. 
<laughs> Not that she's one for gossip, you know what I mean? Now <laughs> oh, then, Jimmy Corkill. And can I also thank uh, my lovely missus here, Jacqueline, oh. for masterminding the Al catering, eh? Masterminding? Ah, now then, I just uh, just want you all now to be raising your glasses in a toast to the happy couple. And can I just say, all this, you know, reminds me of my wedding day. All those years ago, I mean, my wife and I, God, you know... God, we were... Jimmy, tell them all how old we are while you're about it. <laughs> well, I'm 14, she's 30. Just shut up and get on with it. No, listen, all I want to say, all I want to say is, uh, I hope that uh, it isn't too long before this happy marriage is blessed with children. Oh. The happy couple. The happy couple. Cheers. Sammy, will you please tell me where she is? Where is she? Stop it! Stop! What's wrong? Frank, what is it? Is there anything that I can do? Come in. I can see you're all... Look, I'll just go, shall I? We can't find the baby. <laughs> what? You can't find the baby? What do you mean? She's done something with the baby, and she won't tell us what or where she is. Well, what have you... I mean, have you told the police? Oh, what, we're gonna have to. <sighs> Sammy, what have you done? Sammy, if you don't tell me now where Louise is, I'm getting on that phone and I'm phoning the police. Sammy, the baby might be in danger. You have to tell us what's happened. <laughs> Maxie, Pat, you have a little top up? No, no, I'm sure. Right, yeah. Okay, Bye. catch you later. Thank you. We shouldn't have come. Well, we can't not come. I mean, what could we have told people? Can't not turn up to a party just because Frank's daughter has <laughs> abandoned a baby somewhere. Oh, I know we couldn't tell anyone, but I can't enjoy myself. Not knowing a baby's missing is a young woman obviously in need of help. Yeah, I know, and you're right. But look, let's just stay for a minute, OK? People think we're being funny walking out. Oh, can't you forget about the business for one day? I've had to shut the shop, haven't I? Do you reckon I could get Jackie Corkill to work Sundays? No. Why not? Because we won't be opening on Sundays, that's why. Dee Dee, everybody's going to be opening on a Sunday soon. Just because everybody's doing it doesn't mean it's right. I mean, just because you started going to church again to play for your Derek soul. I didn't say it like that. I expect you to respect my views, not belittle them. Oh, I do, love. I'm sorry. I am. I'll tell you what, I really missed you as well. Yeah, especially when it's dinner time and you need your shirt ironing. Here you go, John, mate. Take it easy, eh? What are you doing? I'm looking after you. You're still convalescent, aren't you? I don't need looking after, thank you very much. OK, sorry. Well, just leave it there, then, in case you want it. I won't need it. Don't be so prickly, John. He's only joking. Yeah, listen, last time I wasn't there to look after you, you overdid it, didn't you? Hey, ended up in the hospital. <laughs> look, my health is my business, and I'll thank you to stay out of it. OK, sorry. Only kidding. Just enjoy yourselves, eh? You know, I mean, that's what we're all here for, isn't it? Quite. I'll go and get your sandwich. No, you won't. OK. So, have you finished travelling the world now? Oh, hardly the world. I was just cruising the Caribbean. Oh, is that all? So, you staying on dry land for a while, then? I don't know, yeah. I don't think I'd like to be stuck on a shop and don't know if there's enough custom to go mobile. Well, if you do, get me as your first customer. A cheek of your Uncle Jimmy. I've been hearing that all my life. What's he done now? He's treating me like a pensioner, like a sick old man. I'm as fit. As he is, apart from the asthma. If you're staying around for a while, perhaps we could get together. I'd like to be shown around by a native. Are you asking me out? Yeah. Yes, I am. It doesn't take you long to settle in, does it? Well, if you don't ask, you don't get anywhere, do you? I suppose not. Oh, well, you know where I live, anyway. Yeah, I certainly do. Can I get you another drink? Uh, yeah, I'll have another champagne, thanks. Yeah, Dee, but opening up on a Sunday, you know, doesn't mean people are going to stop going to church. All the Catholic countries in Europe open on a Sunday. Yeah, but it's not just about going to church. It's about, well, I'll keep your Sunday separate. A day of rest. Oh, yeah. And me opening up on a Sunday is going to change all that. You know, the very fabric of society is going to crumble. The end of civilization as we know it. The thin end of the wedge. Keep Sunday special. Julia. Hey, Jimmy. How about that letter, eh? What letter? You know, a Fletcher's the estate agent. Oh, collecting rent for Barry Grant. 
<laughs> oh, yeah, that, well, it's only fair, isn't it? And, uh, what about the 20% they put on top, Jim? You know, for collecting it, like. <laughs> yeah, well, uh, you know, <laughs> a bit steep, wasn't it? Still, that's life, isn't it? Listen, I've got to mingle anyway. You're squatting, you, aren't you? Squatting? <laughs> Behave, will you, Ronnie? Look, Barry Grant is doing me a favour for once. Look, I'm just keeping that unit ahead for a while, that's all. Hey, Grantie wouldn't do anybody any favours. You're squatting there, aren't you, Jimmy? Come on, admit it. Do you think Barry Grant would put up with anyone squatting in one of his units, eh? Don't talk soft, Ronnie. Look, I'll get you another drink, OK? Hey, do you know how much rent I pay on that shop? Ron, can't you talk about anything else besides the shops? I mean, this is a wedding reception. <laughs> he said, he said, I don't care where you come from, but you're not dancing with my wife like that. <laughs> What's tickling you, then? <laughs> Max has just told me a very amusing story. <laughs> Go on, then. Oh, you wouldn't like it. Oh, wouldn't I? Why, is it for just fit young men? I take exception to people telling dirty jokes to my wife. Dirty jokes? No, no, it's quite harmless, really. It's just uh, about a man who says he's a little stiff uh, from Babington. Oh, really? Don't be silly, John. Um, Patricia, I'll just go and rescue her from you. Uh, excuse me. Let's see, what is the matter with you? Max is a charming man. Haven't you missed something out? What? Max is a charming young man. Rod? Over here. Excuse me, John. Well, I won't be a minute. It's no time like the present. Oh, it's telling you. <laughs> oh, we've got something to say. Well, you're not getting divorced, are you? Oh, don't talk soft. Mm. I've never seen a happier couple. What is it, love? Should you say or me? Well, you know we've always said that when we eventually get married, like, well, the house. What about the house? We want it to ourselves. So you're throwing us out? No. Yeah. But you've got three weeks while we're away on honeymoon. You can find a place in that time. And you have got your own place anyway, Julia. Here you are, come out then, lift, eh? Will you stop treating me like this? Look, John, I'm just making sure that you don't overdo things. We don't want you to end up in the hospital again, do we? You'll be the one that ends up in hospital if you continue to talk to me like this. Oh. You threaten me then, are you? All I'm uh -huh. saying is I can move a table. I don't need to sit down, and I don't need you to wet nurse me all the time. I'm a lot younger, a lot fitter than you think I am. Oh, so you're there threatening me then, are you? <laughs> all right. <laughs> if that's the way you want it, out the front. Now, just you and me. Come John, on, come John, on. Stop hey, it. Stop don't you go causing trouble here, Jimmy Carkill. Wait, will you? I've never been better behaved in my life. Um, what's going on, Julia? Oh, I should have known you wouldn't be far away if any trouble to be had. Hey, don't you talk to me like that. Typical cork hill. Oh, change the record, will Can you? Can we stop this now? John, we're going home. Oh, Dan, no, come on, look, hey. Listen, it's the kids' day, isn't it? Come on, for their sakes, let's all just cool down and, you know, have a bit of fun. Hey, Julia, come out. Let's go and get that stereo on and get a bit of music going. Have a knees up, eh? All right. You're right. Come on. Here you are, love. <laughs> It'll let. Uh... Come in handy for the honeymoon. But Dad, you've already got us a present. Oh, I can't give you enough, you know that. Dad, I can't take this. There must be thousands here. One thousand, exactly. And anyway, you have taken it. I want you to be happy. Not just one thousand pounds worth of happiness, but happy for the rest of your life. I'm all I've got to use this thank you card. You wrote this all by yourself, eh? Yeah. I'm so glad Dad encouraged me to go to classes. I feel like I can start to stand on my own two feet now. I'm so proud of you. Thanks, Dad. Thanks for everything. Hello? Yeah? Yeah? Thank God for that. Where is she now? Uh, and she's perfectly all right. Oh, great. Thanks. Yeah. When can we bring her home? What? Oh, we can care for her. Yeah, but we're a family. Yeah. 
Yeah, okay, I'm sorry. Yeah? Yeah, sure. Yeah, we wait. Thanks. We can't have her back yet. They're keeping her in hospital for checks. Why can't we have our baby back? They've taken her from us. <laughs>